Hello everyone and welcome to the world of color. Uh, we will give a few minutes for everyone to join, uh, but we have a very colorful um, presentation today and you will learn a lot about color psychology, about your personalities, and how do you use color on a daily basis to create balance. So I am Fatima El Shirawi, color psychologist and founder of the Gracious F Color Consulting. Well, I will give you a brief idea um, about me and how I started my journey with color. So I'm an artist actually, uh, and I have always loved uh, painting. That was the way I used to express myself as a child uh, through my colors. I used to express my emotions through that. And growing up, uh, I expressed that through my fashion. And I was in an era where color was overwhelming in the fashion industry growing up. Um, and I also had another talent of I was very good in uh, analyzing people, reading people. So so color psychology and sociology was kind of a combined passion of mine. Um, and that is where I, I took the steps in taking that as my career. So today, before I start the presentation, um, I would like to note that this is a very interactive workshop. So I will be asking you questions and you can also share with me in the chat um, say your opinions or your, your attraction to a certain color group as I am speaking. And uh, we will have a Q&A at the end to answer any questions you have after the presentation. Um, so I think we are uh, ready now. So I will first share with you um, the presentation before we start. So a little bit of more of an introduction about uh, how I started uh, in the industry of color psychology and how many actually industries color psychology can be used in. So my journey with my education started um, in the George Washington University in Washington, DC. I studied sociology and marketing. Uh, because these were my passion. As I mentioned, I loved analyzing people. And at the same time, uh, it was interesting that my family actually, I, my mother's side, they're all doctors and my, my father's side, they're all in real estate. So I am the only creative person in the family. So I had to combine uh, our tradition and my creativity together. So that's how I combined sociology and marketing together. Um, and once I graduated, um, at that time, UAE and Dubai was booming when it came to tourism. So I studied my master's in tourism and event management. Uh, after I finished my journey in the US and I came back, um, I wanted to gain some experience from a business perspective. So I joined the family business. But um, however, as I said, I'm a very creative person and I really was craving for something more. Um, and my actually my passion about color psychology and the color effects theory start, started from um, a, a personal journey that I went through using this theory in helping me through a very difficult time in my life. Uh, and it helped actually truly help me bring out my identity. So um, I had a reassessment of my life and I uh, decided to study what I always loved, which was fashion design. So I went back to university to uh, London College of Fashion. I did a summer also in Polymoda in Florence, which was a wonderful experience. Um, and when I studied fashion design, of course, in order for us to understand trends and understand our consumer, we studied color psychology. Here's where I was introduced to the great psychologist Angela Wright, and I had the honor to be taught by her, and I just loved color psychology. So I went on to, uh, to certify as a color consultant from the Color Effects Institute. So now that I finished my entire educational journey, um, as you can see, I always like to think out of the box. So I uh, looked at our industry and we saw what was missing. And uh, there was a lot 
um, of gaps in the market actually when it came to marketing, when it came to consumer experience, it was very copy paste what was out there and was applied but couldn't relate to the market. Uh, so I created the Gracious Self uh, initially as a personal branding um, and also a self-development program. Um, and it was doing great on a one-on-one -on -one with the clients, but it grew over time. We started advising corporations. We started creating customer experiences for, um, for luxury brands. And it honestly took a life of its own. Um, so I had the honor to also be part of the journey of the creative industry in D3 in uh, Dubai. And this was great working with the community, with partners and sharing. So this is um, just a little bit of background of my uh, what I have studied and how I have developed my industry. And I've been in this for the past 10 years. So today, um, we, I will walk you through what we will be discussing. Uh, first, we'll be talking about what is color, understanding the process of color. Uh, then we will speak about how color affects our mood and behavior. Uh, we will also discuss what is color symbolism. And then we will go into the theory of the color effects theory. We will talk about the four different color personalities that each individual um, belongs to, resonates with, and we will also see that there's an explanation why each one of us has two sides to our personality. I will give you some visual examples of when you use the right colors and how it um, reflects on your skin tone, how it affects your body language, and also what message you're giving out to people. Um, and then we will discuss furthermore when it comes to wellness, how do we use these beautiful colors in healing ourselves? So how do we use it to, um, on a daily basis to uh, constantly have balance in our life? And how do we use it in our environment, in our interior? Um, and then we would be open to Q&A. So as I said um, that my um, workshops are very interactive. So here I would like to first ask you a question. What is the percentage of our response to color, uh, which is conscious? So consciously, when we look at a certain color and feel it, how much percentage do you feel that is? So you could write in the chat the options that we have here. So I'm looking forward to your answers. Okay, we have 50%, 80%. Okay, you're getting close. Any other guesses? Okay, so 80 seems to be a common percentage. Okay, well, the actual percentage is only 20% is our conscious choice towards the color, which means 80% of our choices are unconscious. That shows how profound color is affecting us on a daily basis, what you're wearing, the colors you have around you are all influencing how you should feel. Okay, so another question here for you is before we answer the question, what is color? How do blind people or do blind people actually feel color and how do they feel this color? So in the chat, if someone can give me an answer to that. So you can guess yes or no. If yes, how, how do you think they can feel color? Yes, okay, great. Okay, somebody said the temperature, you're close. Yes, that's true. Okay, so here to explain how they feel color is when you said temperature, we can say is the vibration, which is very true. So normally in, in our actual workshop, um, we can 
feel the color while I actually do a test with the audience where I blindfold them and I put some particular colors uh, on their hands. And they actually tell me that sometimes they feel it's warm, sometimes they feel it's cold, sometimes they don't feel any vibration. So this is how blind people can actually feel color. And we train them to feel the vibration and actually know which color they're exposed to. So now we can explain what is color. So for us to see color, we require light. Light is a wavelength of, um, it's a part of the electromagnetic wavelength um, and the only part of the spectrum that is visible to us. Now, the process of how do we see color is basically once light is reflected on the eyes, there's cones and rods that filter the color you are exposed to. Accordingly, messages are sent to the brain that you're currently, for example, exposed to the color blue. So the brain then processes saying, fine, now that you see blue, you uh, are going to be very focused. Um, you can now start communicating better. So here is where uh, you basically get the emotion that you require when you're exposed uh, to a certain color. Now, another interesting point here is black and white is not a color. The reason for that is black basically absorbs light. So therefore, you cannot see any color. And white reflects light. So any light you put on white will reflect the, the, the light that you are putting on. So if it's some pink, then it will show up as pink. So here, the misconception, like people always, when I tell them, what's your favorite color? They tell me black or white. And I'm like, that's not a color. So they have to pick another one. So this is the interesting fact of what is color? How do we process color? How do we feel color? And what is considered color? Great. Now we go on to explain how does color affect our mood and behavior? So here, of course, we have so many colors around us and so many emotions around us. So how do we know what is the right color to use? Uh, how do we know this color is something that we need in this phase of our life? So the important rule about color is that each color has a positive and negative side. So the positive is when you use the color for the right purpose. So the example I gave before is blue, is for communication, for focus, for uh, intelligence, okay? So for example, if you exceed using blue, so for example, if you use blue from going to work to going out to having even your nightwear blue, then you're exceeding using that color. So then you start feeling very aloof, very cold, um, and very isolated. So this is now the, an example of how when you've exceeded it, it starts taking a negative side. Then there is another side um, to the color and our mood and behavior is they are four primary psychology colors that affect our mood and behavior. And they're red, blue, green, and yellow. We will be discussing more of this in detail because these are the colors that you have to use on a daily basis. So I will give you an example of actually quite an extreme of a color. So for example, yellow. Yellow is a color that promotes an emotion of friendliness, of creativity. However, if you exceed using the color yellow, it causes depression, anxiety, um, and low self-esteem. So you can see here that the happy faces are not so happy if you use too much of that color. So here, as a rule, we could go through all of um, the colors that we have, but uh, we're focusing more on the wellness. So the key colors that we keep in mind is the primary psychology colors. Another two colors that are very good for healing our emotions, creating a balance, is the color pink, because that is an emotional healing color. And that helps give us actually physical strength through um, emotional turmoils. So it's very good when you are um, craving emotions to wear the color pink, it balances your energy. Another color which is very good 
for mental health and healing is the color purple. Now the color purple is considered a very spiritual color and it is also a color uh, that um, promotes uh, hierarchy, intelligence. Uh, now an interesting fact about purple is that many people um, always associate purple as a rich and expensive color. But actually, um, it is sort of throughout history, they have brainwashed us to think that the color purple is an expensive color is because it's expensive to produce. That's why um, in the 18th century, um, only royalty could afford any garments or any paint that had the color purple in it. So that is why they consider the, the color purple so rich. So here, as we have understood that each color has a positive and negative side, it's important to know when to use these particular colors with particular emotions. Then we have the next part of color. Now, color symbolism, before I explain it, um, I would like to do a little bit of exercise to see what colors mean in different cultures here. So we have a chart here of different industries. So in the chat, if you can tell me, what do you think is the dominant color in the fashion industry? Any guesses? Yes, that's correct. Okay, any other guesses? Okay, well, that's correct. Black is definitely a color that's used in the fashion industry. Okay, now, a second industry. From the logos you can see here, what is a color that's used or dominant in the food and beverage industry? Red, green, yes. Yeah, green seems to be common, yes. Okay, great. All right, finally. What is um, a color that is used in the automobile industry? What's the dominant color there? Okay, so we can see silver, gray, great. This is amazing. So now it is very clear from your answers how you can see that it's a global influence of what we think certain industries have dominant colors. Now, the color black in the fashion industry is actually a color that a lot of the fashion designers have influenced us to think that the color black is the color of power. Uh, Coco Chanel is the queen of influencing us that the little black dress is the most elegant and powerful uh, color, even the black suit. So this is more an outside influence. Also in the FMB, they all use color psychology, by the way. We are all been influenced completely in, in being loyal to a certain brand due to color psychology. So they use red, orange, yellow, because red, um, McDonald's is a prime example. So they use yet red for you to eat fast and not stay long in their space. The yellow is the friendly factor. Um, the orange is to make you hungry. So they have used the perfect colors to influence you and process you the way they want to. So color symbolism is your opinion or feelings toward a certain color due to an outside influence, whether it is culture, religion, or a personal experience that you have gone through and you have functioned yourself that this is the color that you associate yourself with. So that is why each industry has picked a color to influence globally what color we associate with that industry. Now, also your personal experience plays a very big role in kind of holding you back from using a certain color, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it is actually the true emotion that this color is giving you. You have just conditioned yourself to think this is a good color, this is a bad color. So there are two examples of clients that I actually had, which had a, a, a negative or actually uh, an age associated uh, idea with a color. So here's where the culture comes in. 
So I had a, a Turkish client who was um, a, a man in his 30s. And uh, he had a color palette that was an autumn palette. So he had a lot of browns, yellows, uh, mustards. And he looked amazing when I was putting the brown colors. But every time I put brown, he would tell me, I will wear this color when I'm older. So I got confused. I was like, there's no age associated with color. You can wear all the colors at any age. He said, no, in my country, the older men wear the color brown. So he had conditioned himself that this is a color that he would wear at an older stage. There was another client that had a very negative experience with the color purple, and she had associated that if she wore the color purple, something bad would happen. So for example, the reason why she thought that is she was wearing purple when her son got into an accident. Thank God he was okay. But then she had associated that purple is a color that brings bad news, which of course we, we trained her to get out of that mindset. So here we can see that color symbolism has also a very profound effect on what we feel towards a certain color. So now that we have understood the process of color, how do we feel about color? How much do we use color? Um, what are the color symbolisms that are influencing us? Uh, we will now introduce you to color effects theory. Now, color effects theory was a theory founded by Angela Wright, who is a UK color psychologist. It is quite a young theory if you look at it. It started in the 1980s and um, it started, her journey started with color where uh, her parents had an, um, a bed and breakfast. And she saw that there was a particular room, two rooms that people wouldn't stay for long. So she asked the customers, what is the reason that you're not staying in this room for long? And every single one of them said, oh, I find the color heavy, um, the color or the style is not what I like. So she decided to change the color of the room and change the style of the room. Instantly, that room was then continuously fully booked and it was functioning like a normal room. So that's where she realized that how color really plays an influence uh, on, on your atmosphere and where what your surroundings are. So um, she was already studying uh, psychology and then she went deeper into color psychology. She took that theory in learning about different cultures, their reactions towards colors. Actually, even through um, um, the definition of how she came up with the four different color groups had to do also with a lot of patterns in history and how many elements were always divided into a group of four. So there are many different actually theories, if you think of that you look at always have four different elements here. So what she did was she divided, she looked at the individual color and how it affected our mood and behavior. Then she took, we are actually exposed to 16 million hues of colors. So she took the 16 million hues of colors, divided it into four different color groups, each one of them has the same wavelength and different shades. So if you look at the boards behind me, here you can see it's a board which has lighter colors. Here you have a board with deeper colors. So they divided the groups into four. And uh, after that, um, we went, um, sorry. Um, okay, I'll look at the question, sorry, later. Um, after we went to, um, Dividing the four different color groups uh, according to the hues of the color, the wavelength of the color, we looked at the characteristics of each of these personalities. So we looked at the region they came from, their mannerism, their body language, uh, what subconsciously, unconsciously they were attracted to when it came to everything, to style, to the their careers, uh, to um, certain metals actually, um, also uh, certain interests that they have. So here's where the characters were put in uh, into each color group. So you will now notice once we introduce each personality is you will 
resonate either with one or two uh, of the personalities. And some people will tell me, okay, I have three, that is too much because each one of us, the main is where you come from and the region. Your subordinate usually has to do well. All of us are mixed blood all over the world. We don't know our ancestry. So this actually brings us where a part of the region where you could come as your ancestry, uh, you belong to as a color group. So, and you take your strength from these two color groups, depending on your field of work or the stage in your life that you are in. Okay, so first we will introduce you to the morning light personality. The morning light personality here, we can see that the colors are very youthful, very young, a spring palette, as I would say. The shape is also round, playful. Now, when we look at the features of a morning light personality, they are very youthful. So actually this is a personality that no matter how old they are, they will always look younger than their age. The reason for that is that they have a very lively and young heart. They're always active. They love the outdoors. Um, light is very important in their space. So you will see always big windows in their homes and um, bringing nature indoors. So the characteristics of this personality, they're multitaskers, they're very intelligent, very creative, uh, very sensitive, and they love to dance. This is a, a key thing about a morning light personality. They're very active. They're great with kids. So a lot of them you would see are teachers uh, or even sports teachers because they're combining both together. Then we look at their interior. Their interior is also very trendy, very fun. They like to follow trends, but it's very lighthearted. They don't like anything too heavy around them. The type of prints they're attracted to are like polka dots, small flowers. Their metal is more of a yellow gold. Uh, they're not attracted, and we actually do a gold and silver test to see also which color group you're part of. So you can even test this at home take a gold chain on our silver chain. And when you put it against your skin, you'll notice if you are a gold group, then you will see your skin tone is pink and your veins disappear. But if it's silver and it's not your color group, you'll see your veins are popping out and the skin tone is very pale. So this is also where metal goes in. Finally, we have the fragrances they're attracted to. So of course, since their connection with nature, it's very flowery, very fruity, uh, very light and fun. So the type of fabrics is also very soft, very flowy, something because they're always active um, and they're on the move. So it's very important for them to have comfort when it comes to their style. So here it's very important to know, like if you're looking at a morning light personality with such lovely light colors, you cannot imagine them being in black because that will drain their energy. It's too heavy as a vibration. So here's where we go. Even the darker colors, if you put them in a very dark colors, it will also drain their energy. Now, as a region, as I said, because it's mixed, it's not a rule, but mostly a morning light personalities would be towards uh, Australia, South America. These are the regions that would have more the morning light personality. So anybody resonate with this personality, put number one. Okay, we have one. Okay, so we have some morning light personalities. Great, so we have two morning light personalities. Okay, just a note, just to answer the question, uh, Massimo's question, to confirm that morning uh, grieving colors is in black in the West world and white in the Eastern, that is correct. And this is where we talk about color symbolism. So that is absolutely correct. 
So great, going back to the morning light. So we have two morning light personalities that that's completely great and you must be always the life of the party. All right, now we go into the next personality, which is the dream light personality. Now here we look at the color palette. The colors are more muted, more soft. And the reason why we also name this personality a dream light personality, aside from the soft colors, is if we look at the features. The features, you see that their eyes are very dreamy, sleepy eyes. You'll also know that their mannerism, uh, they're very soft-spoken. Uh, they're also the diplomats. They like to analyze their environment and always say the right and appropriate answer or discuss something that's appropriate to their environment. They are very creative and very good with their hands. So usually they are artists or musicians. Uh, they love heritage, they love history. So uh, a way to their heart is actually even their loyalty to certain brands usually has to do with um, the highest luxury and a story and heritage behind it. So here, if we look at also their environment, we can see that it is very opulent, soft colors, um, very uh, beautiful fabrics around here. They, they like very high-end fabrics, so cashmere, lace, for example. Now, this personality also a signature about two things about the dream light personality. If you ask them what's their favorite color, they'll tell you pink. And um, their favorite signature is pearls. So if you see pearls, you know it's a dream light personality. Now, when it comes to the metal, they usually like muted silver with plain diamonds, for example. Um, and the, the perfume is also, the essence are very soft. So um, very like roses, lily of the valley, you know, very soft uh, lavender, these kind of fragrances. Now, as we can see overall here, the industry actually, a lot of um, designers or artists or architects actually are usually dream light personality because I said they work very well with their hands. Now, an example of the region would be the Europe. Um, a very prime example of the, these colors that are dominant is in France. Uh, you see a lot of uh, dream light personality elements from the colors that they have around. Um, and also all the artists that have come out actually of that region. So anybody resonate with the dream light personality? Uh, put number two. Okay, great. We have a dream light. Two. Okay, now two. All right. Oh, we have a lot of dream lights. I'm also a subordinate dream light. So that's great. Excellent. All right, so now we go on to our next personality, which is a firelight personality. Now, this personality also named according to their character, they are very dynamic and they love life. They love exploring. So when we look at the colors here, the colors are warmer, very jewel tone, um, autumn sort of colors. The features are uh, big eyes, uh, a, more of an olive skin. So here even we can, even with the skin tone, we're going deeper and deeper. Um, now the characteristic of this personality, the reason I said it's fire because they're all over the place. Number one, they love traveling. They love to learn about different cultures. They love to experience the place through living with, um, walking through the streets, having traditional food, learning about the history, mixing with the culture. This is what they love to do. Another motto that they have is save the world. So they love doing charity work and anything that actually they have or even their field of work always has to do with something that is giving back to the society, giving back to the world. Um, they love things and people with substance. So for example, they love, uh, they love to research, they love to read. Um, and, and an important factor here is, as I said, substance is very important. So one thing that is also important in their environment is they like solid furniture. So a lot of wood, 
uh, a lot of carvings on the wood, uh, texture, heavy texture. Um, and a very interesting thing that I know of a fire light personality when they come in for a session is they like to, they, they're very sensitive to touch. So they like to touch the texture. So for example, if they're sitting on a chair, they'll be rubbing the seats. Or if they're, um, they go shopping, they have to feel the fabric. So they're very sensitive with touch. Um, a key thing about their actually personal style is that they like statement pieces. So, and their pieces has to be also relating to their travel. So they will be wearing some traditional big piece or a band that's something from a traditional culture. Um, the fragrances here we can see also heavy. So a lot of wood, musk, um, and even the fabrics that they're attracted to are things with texture like leather, tweed, so, so forth. So here, when we look at the features, uh, we look at the interest, this is more the Mediterranean Middle East. Uh, and also if you look at the, the color palette is very much, you will see that even in the architecture of the region. So this is um, overall a firelight personality. Anybody resonate with this group? So we have already one, number three, anyone else? Wow, so we have a lot of firelight personalities. So I'm a combination of a firelight personality and a dream light. So here you can see the combo of both. Great, excellent. So now we come to our final personality, which is the starlight personality. Now the starlight personality is a true star. This personality is very dynamic. Their body language, when they enter a room, they demand respect without a word, and you will respect them because of the energy that they give them. So the colors here we can see are very strong, very solid colors. The other previous palettes had yellow undertone or blue undertone, but here these are solid colors. Also, the only color group that has the color black in it. So here we can see from the features that they have very sharp eyes, very, um, strong persona, their, their skin tones are also extreme. They may be extremely fair or extremely dark. So it's not in between, you have extremes here. This personality is also extreme in their behavior. So they're world leaders, why? Because they look at a situation, they find a solution and they instantly implement it, but they expect you to trust them. They will not stop and explain. So, and they're very focused about their career, very focused about their um, legacy in life. So this is very important. So a lot of our world leader CEOs definitely have a starlight personality in them. Now, key things about their characteristics, they do not like clutter. Their space has to be very clean, minimalistic and clear. They, if they add color, it will be a touch of yellow or pink, but very little. They do not like prints except for geometric prints. Um, also the type of metal, they go for shiny silver. The fragrances are very zesty, citrus um, and strong. So this personality, if we look at a pure starlight personality, then we have um, Africa and Scandinavian countries. So I told you it's like extreme, but what we have here, as I explained, is each one of us has two sides to our personality. It is rare uh, per region to find somebody who is a pure starlight. Um, and normally a pure starlight, we would honestly so far and our studies have only found three per region, which is a pure starlight. Uh, the firelight is more common to find a pure firelight. So it really depends on uh, the region here. So who resonates with the starlight personality? Do we have um, number four? We have one already. Okay, so one is a four uh, and a one. Okay, great. So that is a good balance, actually, if you resonate with a four and a one, because you have your serious and the playful side. Okay, so we have three and two, two and four. 
Yes, so this is excellent. Now you can see that you are relating to each of these personalities and identifying which one you could be. Of course, um, in order to have an accurate um, sort of uh, classification of what your personalities and what color palettes you do um, use, of course, you do a color session where uh, here we take you through the process. So first we ask you general personality questions, which your answers will put you in a category. Then we test the four basic color palettes on you, which when we do it is very interesting and we will soon see then an example of how physically uh, you can see the change in your skin tone and your body language. And then we test the gold and silver. So once that process is defined, then we know your color personality. Here's where then you have in detail in terms of the characteristics, the careers, uh, sort of fabrics, um, whether it's jewelry, people wear um, for women, it's makeup, uh, you know, so, so forth. And then of course, a guideline of how to wear it. So this is how the process of how you're classified as a color personality. So now we go into how does this physically look on us. So example here, this model has zero makeup on. She is a firelight personality with a starlight subordinate. I put her first in a morning light color group, which is the orange. You can see her skin tone is pale. Her body is also very stiff. She's not very comfortable. Now, when I put her in her morning light, in her firelight and starlight personality here, you can see her shoulders are more relaxed. Her lips are darker. And as I said, there's no makeup here. This is completely natural. And also her skin looks brighter. So this is why it's important that a person has to be in their correct color palette. So now that we know these wonderful personalities, you have physically seen how these colors appear. It's important to confirm that this theory does apply globally to every personality, every region, and every age group. So Angela Wright created a study uh, with 174 um, group of people and picked people from different regions, male and female, varying from 18 to 77. So we expose them to the theory, we expose them to the different color groups, and this is something naturally without any explanation. What we found is the level of agreement with the color effects theory was 76.8%, which is quite a high number. Level of agreement between the color groups was 92 plus. So here you can see that this is a very scientific proven theory that every single person can relate to. And once classified correctly, you can positively progress in using color in every aspect of your life. So now we go into our wellness when it comes to color psychology. So color to balance your daily uh, energy. As we mentioned previously, the primary psychology colors. Now, the reason why we should use this on a daily basis is you, first of all, manage to take away anxiety, take away your depression, take away um, any aggravation you have in uh, dealing with, for example, uh, at work which is something you can change, but you have to go to work. Or with family, also something you cannot change, you have to deal with on a daily basis. So you have to find tools of how do you balance your energy to face these obstacles. So we will start first with the color yellow. As I mentioned, color yellow is an emotional uh, strength co color, and it's also a creative color. Now, when do you use this? You use the color yellow in social situations. So for example, if you are sitting with the family, uh, you are having a meal or a game night, you would have the color yellow. You could also use it in your environment, in the sitting room around, like cushions around, to give that vibe. But this is a color that you use for more of a social 
um, uh, situation because it gives you the self-confidence and then you're also easy in being creative and, and communicating with people. Then we have the color red. The color red is a physical energy color. So the color red is a color that should be used when you are working out at the gym or any activity that involves um, a physical effort is when you use the color red. Then the color blue. The color blue is the color of an intellect and communication. So this is a color that you wear uh, at work when you want to focus or if you are working on a project at home or if you're reading a book or anything that requires your full attention and complete focus, you wear the color blue. Plus, if you want to be taken seriously also and have an open communication is also color blue is the perfect color. Then we have the color green. So the color, color green is the color of balance and peace. So they're very interesting facts actually about the color green. So the color green is the universal color of love. And uh, we've noticed not every, like majority of the people, very rare you'll find someone that tells you, I, I don't like the color green. Maybe the hue is the that they don't like, but usually the color green is a universal color everyone likes. Now, another very big universal color that uh, majority of the people like is blue. And uh, as I said, color symbolism, many of the times uh, men are more inclined to picking the color blue over any of the other colors. So an, another interesting fact is that men and women see color in a different way. So men actually see the colors and the wavelength of it in a more solid tone, while women can see it into further tones of the colors. So that's why when you would go shopping with your other half and you'd be like, oh, I love the shade of like purple and it'd be like, it's just a purple color. That's because they see it differently. So it's very interesting fact here. Now, these are the, the primary psychology colors you use on a daily basis and you will notice over time the change in you. You will notice that whenever you, you will have a tool of color to use when you're facing a certain situation. So for example, you can see that here, I am giving a lecture, but I want it to be very interactive and open communication. I want you to trust me with the information I give you. So I wore the color blue. And honestly, it's super simple when you apply these rules, like life is, is truly um, in peace when you're using the right color. So always think, what is the emotion that is related to the color? And uh, what is the situation I'm looking at? Accordingly, wear that color. So we have a question here. Is it true that people with different eye colors would see the colors uh, differently? No, that is not true. Uh, so this is, a, there are many actually misconceptions about, about color, but it all comes down to like, we cannot specifically say um, when it comes to colors how people use it because you also have to consider medical uh, factors in. So for example, um, maybe some people have some chronic illnesses where it affects their sight. So the way they see their color changes over time, even as you grow older, you actually see the color uh, tones in a different way. And we can see that in a lot of like artists actually, um, uh, Monet is a good example. His his paintings and his last days, if you see, were blur, but that that's because he could see it in that way. It wasn't intentional. That is what he saw. So this is how the colors are interpreted. Okay. Um, all right. Then we go into our environment. So colors that affect your sleep pattern. Now it is it's crucially important that the color you have uh, surrounding you when you sleep. Because when you sleep, this is the time that your body is generating uh, its energy. And usually, if we don't get enough sleep, then of course, we don't function very well. And there are a lot of factors around us that deprive that. So here, we actually did a study, and I actually did it on myself with my Fitbit. Um, so the color of my room is a light blue. 
And I did actually have full seven hours um, to eight hours of sleep. Now, it's very important to look at here the colors. So the majority of the time people would pick a gray because they would think, oh, it's a relaxing color or even a silver. Um, sometimes these are usually like more muted colors. But generally, as a rule, the best colors um, you should have are always lighter tone. Blue is the best for a color. Then you can go with a very light lemon, uh, a light green. Uh, but as we go down to the darker colors, purple, which people think it, I mean, it is a spiritual color, but however, for sleep, it, it uh, because it keeps your mind so active and actually here, um, it also like um, raises your intuition. So therefore your third eye is, super active because of the level of intuition that you have so that's why you will not get any sleep so here this is a very important guide to use of what colors that you have in your environment that help give you a balance so the key thing here to remember about uh, the color effects theory and the personalities and how do we apply color on a daily basis is that as you saw, each of the personality has certain characteristics. So we know exactly what our strength and our weakness is. So we know how to treat it, not only with color, but also to be very conscious of ourselves. So a morning light personality, for example, when they feel down, and usually they actually suffer from seasonal depression. So whenever the, the seasons change, they actually go to depression because I told you they're very connected to nature. But here it's important to know as a morning light personality, if you're feeling down, what do you do? Number one, you have to go outdoors, have some activity or socialize with someone. Use colors like yellow and red to raise your energy. So for a dream light personality, their escape usually is something where they use their hands. So play an instrument, um, paint, or do um, hand, handcrafted exercises. Um, also, you would go into your very light colors, relaxing, like light blues, light greens to, to calm you down. Fire light personality, as I said, motto in life is save the world. So that they feel alive and needed when they volunteer. So that's a way to do it. Also here, the colors that they have to wear our deep colors like reds and, and brown because that also gives a sense of solidarity and stability. Uh, then you have finally the starlight personality. As we said, they need a project. They need a, a, a problem and solution. So they can solve different problems for people or work on a project or help out someone with a business plan. And here, of course, they would be in their black or white or, or blue, because that's all that they would wear. So, so here you can see that you have your characteristics, you know your strength, you know how to get yourself out of your anxiety and depression, and you know what colors to use it, and so forth. So uh, now we will open the floor to any questions uh, that we have. So we have any questions about what we have presented or about the personalities or maybe certain colors that you want to learn how to use in, in certain um, situations. We have also shared with you my contact. So you can contact me WhatsApp or email me with any inquiries that you wish. What's a good energizing color that's not too bright? Uh, a good energizing color, I would say not too bright. You could go towards peach is a good color to give you energy because it's not too red and it's not too um, dark. 
Yellow also, like a mustard yellow, would work well. It's a bit toned down, but of course, it all depends on your color palette. What color should I wear to make people to trust me? Uh, you should wear the color blue. This definitely gives people the sense of trust towards you. What color for a new job? Thank you very much. Uh, I am glad you found the workshop interesting. Um, the color for work, it honestly depends on your field of work, but generally blue is the color that you use to um, have a sense of confidence, uh, be taken seriously. But of course, also if you are, uh, for example, in a creative work, what you can do is you can wear a black suit and the color of the tie can depend on what field of work. So if you're something in say finance, accounting, you would wear a blue tie. If you're something in creative marketing, you would wear a yellow tie. So, and, and so forth, so. What color should I wear when I go out for selling? Okay, so here it depends on honestly the, the what you are selling and um, and the product uh, and the persona you have to give in. So a lot of the time when you do your color personality, it's uh, important to identify then which color we would use for your field of work. Okay, so somebody is asking, what's my favorite color? Well, my favorite color, uh, well, now it's pink, but before it used to be purple. Okay, what color is the best for meeting with new group of people? Um, okay, so if it's socially, if it's for work, then I would say the color blue, but if it is socially, you can wear um, yellow, you can wear peach, you can wear green, um, you can wear pink. These are very good colors for social colors. Okay, how would you explain that it's possible to wear one color but like different colors, but in other people, sorry about that, no problem. Okay, so how do you explain that you like to wear different colors? Okay, here is super simple. Yes, you can because not everybody would wear one single color. So here is where we uh, combine the different colors on the color. So I'll show you an example here. So for example, we have the color wheel right here. So say you are in the mood for um, blue, okay? And you want to um, combine it with another color. So we would go with the yellow where it would be a complementary color. So that way, when you do the contrast, it doesn't look so complicated. Another rule for the color wheel when you wanna mix colors is uh, you can do the triangle. So you have this, and then you can maybe go with the green here. So here is where you can have like a triangle and combine three colors. Also, there are different rules. Honestly, there are many different rules, but these are the basics. So you have contrast, you have triangle, you can have the square, uh, you can even have two tones, for example. So uh, you can wear, for example, like a deep red, with then a lighter red, which is very nice because it kind of gives a three dimension, uh, two dimension look to your outfit. Great. I like the questions. Yes, uh, yes, we can recommend, uh, we can email you actually a site where it shows you the color rules. Um, of how do you combine different colors and outfits. Thank you so much, Marina. Thank you very much. Thank you, it's been great. You've been a great audience um, and I love your interaction. It's been my pleasure and I thank Small World for inviting me to this webinar and uh, you can get in touch with me uh, as we've shared our contacts. And I hope to see you soon in another topic about color psychology. Thank you very much and have a nice evening.